Bill, it is great meeting you, man. But more importantly, the fact that you're here at City Hall Live, Nathan Phillips Square. Man, you had the place rocking. You filled this place with music. What was the experience like for you, man? It was really a thrill. It's, I mean, uh, it's, Toronto's my home. So uh, it was actually my daughter sent me the link, said, hey, Dad, you should apply for this. So, you know, just figured, what the heck? Sent in the stuff. And uh, they responded, and we uh, got the gig. And uh, it's been a ton of fun. Audience definitely respond. In fact, I watched one young guy. He ran from inside, came across to see what was going on, sat down there, and I could just see his leg shaking. Man, like I said, you had people going, man. Yeah, yeah. And we saw a few friends that came out as well. So I did my best to, you know, do the social media kind of heads up and whatever. And uh, you know, but it's been a great day. No, man, it's been a fantastic day. But look, I gotta, I gotta go in a little bit of history with you, too, man. You're Torontonian, man. When did the love of music start for you? Uh, well, I. Uh, I was living in St. John, New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. I spent a few years there as a young kid, and uh, the Beatles came on Ed Sullivan, and uh, my sister was a couple years older than me, so she knew it was something was going on with this band, the Beatles, and, and uh, you know, it just totally, just that was it. And, uh, you know, just got my first guitar at 10, you know, played it all of the time, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, our, my first band was in grade six. I think we were, you know, covering stuff like, uh, you know, Chewy Chewy and Yummy 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 and Beatles songs, all that kind of bubblegum pop stuff back in the day. And, you know, just stuck with it my whole life, you know. Had a few moments where, you know, a little bit of profile and, and uh, limelight and then, you know, also just uh, took some time away from it to raise my kids and, you know, try to keep a balance happening in the whole journey. Well, when you talk about balance too, man, there is a significant balance to the way your style of music is from what I heard, man, because there's rock, there's country, there's soul, there's gospel, there's R&B. How did that all form? It didn't just form from the Beatles, man. It comes from another place well, too. You know, I mean, I write the songs and I don't, uh, I really don't uh, sit down with a game plan. So I'm influenced by all sorts of stuff, you know, and I, I have played gospel music in the past and... Uh, you know, I love uh, country music. I mean, I just love country music and, uh, you know, so when I'm writing a tune, I just get an idea and then uh, I'll, I'll follow it through. Uh, the great thing about having these guys play all the different songs is I think they are, they're able to kind of uh, contribute a, a more common thread so it, it, the songs aren't sort of all over the place. I will write stuff and go, oh, that's, you know, definitely a beatle kind of thing or I'll write something and go, oh, that kind of has a Neil Young flavor. But we don't sort of, okay, it's a beatle sounding song. Let's give it the Beatles treatment. We just kind of do what we do with the Woody so that, you know, Hopefully, uh, even though the styles might be a little all over the place, that there's still a kind of a congruent sound, you know, that sort of ties it all together. Okay, look, I'm not going to let you get away with not telling me what you told me the story earlier about the different genres and that you musically <laughs> did a lot of different things, man. Oh, sure. I mean, uh, I guess uh, kind of went from like the Beatles and then the kind of the bubblegum pop stuff that we were playing in grade six, seven. Then... Uh, you know, kind of the Neil Young, uh, the Guess Who, uh, Creedence Clearwater, you know, that was sort of like a, a huge influence because I think every kid was, were, was playing those songs, you know, at the, for a, a long period of time. But then high school hit and uh, all of a sudden there was this uh, glitter rock, you know, and uh, so I, I was totally just, I just loved the whole thing. So we, we had a band called... I think we call ourselves shadow facts, but, you know, we would spend, you know, an hour just getting, uh, you know, made up and then maybe spend a half an hour working on songs. You know, it was all of us. So, you know, I was a total glitter rocker. Then after that, it was the because, uh, I mean, we were young kids and we were going to be famous no matter what. So we were just constantly following the the uh, popular trends. So then it was uh, progressive rock. And that was kind of the end of my guitar playing then because uh, it was all, you know, m blending classical and jazz and, 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 you know, so it was the whole Pink Floyd and uh, Genesis and Yes and uh, King Crimson and all that kind of stuff. So we did that and that's, that took us through uh, high school. Then uh, my dad took us, uh, the family over to uh, England for a trip and uh, I ran into the first punk rockers. So I came back from Canada going, guys, it's all over, you know? And I, I had hair down in my waist and I chopped it all off. And uh, I wrote some songs that a buddy uh, submitted to the first Q107 Homegrown contest, a band called The Onos. And we won that contest. And uh, 
So that was a, we thought that was our big break and chased that dream for about two and a half years. It crashed and burned. I had a couple of other bands and then landed in a band called I.I. So we, that band finally got a recording contract. Uh, we were nominated for a couple of Junos. Uh, we had a huge uh, year. We were the opening band on all the big tours at the time. So we toured with Glass Tiger, Honeymoon Suite, Platinum Blonde, The Spoons, Gowan, that whole scene. We were part of it. And uh, the first record did really well. But the way pop music can go, the second record was an absolute tank. And uh, it was just time to kind of regroup and, and reassess my whole musical journey. So I, I stepped away from it, raised my kids, and then uh, about 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, started to kind of write songs again in earnest. And uh, yeah, and, this, and that has brought me to where I am right now. Yeah, and the music's not over yet, man, because you guys have an album now. Yeah, we have two. Uh, I've got a solo one that I did about 10 years ago, which, which got me started, which got me connected with these guys. We have since uh, recorded two different uh, records. One's called Oh Look, and then the current one, which is called Mumbo Jumbo Tumbo. And we have another record's worth of songs waiting to record. The reality is, is I uh, self-finance this stuff, and right now I'm in the middle of a kitchen renovation with my wife. <laughs> and soon as that's done and paid for, I get to take the voice back in and, and do the next record. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, you know, I've been in... I've done this all my life. I've played with tons of musicians, but I have to say I'm in the happiest spot of my whole journey right now with these guys that I'm playing with and just with the, uh, the sound that we have and just with my own creativity with the songwriting. It just seems to be in a nice spot. So hey, look, I'm pretty grateful. And we look, before we even wrap this up too, man, we got to give a shout out to your producer and partner in crime in yeah. this, man. Yeah, Mark Shannon. We've been together since like public school. Uh, he was in pretty well all of my bands, and then, but he was a smart guy, so at some point he jumped out of the van and went to Humber College and took uh, recording arts and jazz and all of the stuff, and uh, so he's got a studio in his place, but we also use other studios and then do the fine tuning at his studio, but we have worked together for... Uh, for so long, he's just like a brother. I don't really, I'm not, I'm terrible with the technical stuff, so it's great to have somebody that I don't really have to explain too much to, and he gets what I do, and we kind of have a, you know, a, you know, a wave yeah. that we, we can just work through, and yeah, it's, it's been great. Look, um, what's going to be happening the rest of the summer? I know you got stuff going on today, but the rest of the summer, what are we looking at? Uh, we've got uh, some gigs around the, the city. Um, We've got uh, a gig coming up at Relish. You'll have to check Facebook, Bill Wood and the Woody's on Facebook because I forgot to write down the dates, but we're, we've got a date uh, in July at Relish and a date in August at Relish. We're starting up a new residency at the supermarket in Kensington, which is a really cool place. And it's gonna be a Saturday afternoon matinee from three to six. We are starting in September with the third Saturday of every month. So that's gonna be a regular kind of thing, which it's great to have one of those kind of gigs because, uh, you know, it's the hustle and everything, it's tough. I'm, you know, I still got kids, I still got a wife, I still got a life, you know, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, Always works, man. Yeah. Always works. Uh, social media, to follow you, to figure out where you are and everything yeah. else, where do we go, man? So we have a, a Bill Wood and the Woody's Facebook page. There's also a website, Bill Woody's, BillWoodandTheWoodies.com. Uh, I got a Twitter, whatever, but I think those two places are pretty much would keep you up to speed and give you a chance. Also on uh, YouTube, there's just like a sea of videos, live stuff from different club dates as well as, you know, we've, we shot videos for a couple of songs of the last two records. So there's stuff up there if you want to, you know, investigate us. And if you like us, just, uh, you know, check Facebook because I post all of our gigs all of the time. Fantastic. Bill, thank you so much for thank the interview, you, man. And you know yeah. what? I hope you come back here at City well, Hall Live. So you too. really enjoyed it. It was so much fun. We would do it at the drop of a hat anytime. So call us back, buddies.